everybody and welcome back to the funniest tweets. Today we are talking about the Italian Grand Prix, your submissions to paint the story of what happened around the home of Ferrari. My emotions were... <laughs> I'm, I'm just relieved, to be honest with you. It's funny because the sections we've got coming up are literally two of them. Ferrari and then everything else. So let's dive into your submissions right now. Oh my God, Ferrari. We've got a big old segment, all for the beautiful red cars, because they carried this race in a few different ways. At Vadgama underscore Nix comes in with Ferrari this weekend. We were live on Twitch and I, I, I thought they'd messed up a little bit when they were fighting Verstappen because Carlos Sainz taking pole position, having an amazing Saturday as Ferrari fans. We're used to Saturdays being amazing, aren't we? Sundays, not so much. But Carlos Sainz with the straight line speed of that Ferrari was giving us hope that perhaps we were going to have a fight for the lead. I had forgotten what it was like to see a fight for P1, but we had it for 15 laps. Charles Leclerc was just about hanging on, and then it kind of slipped from the zero in the P1 slash two option over to entertainment, didn't it? At Mr. Underscore Idiot, it's a lie. Speak, my child. Ferrari will win this race. <laughs> I forgot to give you a brain. That, that, it's probably me. That that should probably have my face on it, shouldn't it? Because every single time, without fail, it does not matter how many times my heart has been broken. You know, my hopes dashed. I come back each week. If there's a glimmer of hope of a Ferrari result, I am there no matter what. And there was hope. Carlos had it to a degree. He had Max's number until one small lockup, and that was it. That was all that Max needed to get through. At Krasiek underscore Killy, Ferrari and their biggest enemy. Now I saw this meme, and I, 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 I'm not gonna say that this weekend they were their biggest enemy. They have had moments, Zandvoort being one, where they decided to not put the tires on, but I don't think they were that bad. Like their, their pit stops were all right. They, they weren't their own enemy this time around. I mean. I'm I'm kind of reading this as the strategy. However, I suppose their own drivers. Oh my god, I don't I don't know how they both survived that race. How did they get to the end without without coming together? At Allosaurus underscore 18, for real, the only hope. I was trying to muster up something where we get a miraculous Ferrari win. And in fact, if the Monza curse had happened, which if you don't know what it is, essentially every race winner since 2019 has DNF'd the next year. And obviously Verstappen uh, won the race last year and if he had DNF'd, Perez would have won and Red Bull would have continued their streak. And to be honest with you, look, the record was up for grabs. If it wasn't going to be a Ferrari win, Verstappen does deserve to get 10 in a row and that's what he did. Unreal. I know he's got an amazing car, but so have many other drivers gone before him and nobody's achieved this ever. At Crystal Horner, normal heartbeat, deceased heartbeat, Carlos and Charles battling. Let's, let's get into that whole sort of 10 or so laps. Now I'm gonna say Carlos Sainz was really, really impressive this weekend. Getting pole position and then having the pace over Charles Leclerc, which is not something we've seen all too often since they've been teammates. But he has stepped up his game over the last few races, and I would say he has well and truly arrived at Ferrari. And he was dragging, uh, along with Verstappen, dragging Charles Leclerc along with that battle, really. And then at the end, Perez sort of brought Charles back into the fight against Sainz. Then Carlos, in those last few laps, his tyres were gone, so were Charles. And then they started fighting incredibly aggressively. They were they were literally in front of the Tifosi. They could have just brought it home, but how much it means to both of them to stand on that podium in front of those fans. I get it, but my God, did they risk it. At Joel is chosen. Ferrari, no risks, please. Bring it home. Charles, no, I don't think I will. Literally, 
that team radio being fed, where it says, no risks or whatever uh, Ferrari said, almost immediately, and now I know the, the, the team radios are delayed slightly, but literally, I'm pretty sure it was one corner later, we saw the most outrageous dive bomb from Charles Leclerc to try and get past Carlos Sainz. Both of the front tires locking up. I, he missed it. He missed his teammate marginally. You know what I mean? It was so close. If that had happened, fireworks were going to go off and not the good ones. Although if you like drama, you probably would have enjoyed it. For me, my heart nearly exploded in those last few laps. Because I just, I, you know, obviously Charles Leclerc, you know, I'd love to see him on the podium, but also Carlos Sainz had an incredible race. And I felt like he deserved to be on the podium over Charles in the sense of he was better. Carlos was better over the course of the race. It was just circumstance that Charles was able to DRS his way back to fight his teammate at the end. So look, I am just, as I said, relieved they both survived. At Cell underscore Stone, me when the two Ferraris race each other. That plus a thousand, I would say, screaming throughout. At <laughs> Ricciardo, race debrief is going to be fun today. Fred Vasseur as soon as the drivers are out the car. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder how Fred will deal with that as a situation. I think Carlos will have a few stern words to say to Charles. Of course, Carlos came over the team radio to say, look, guys, let's just bring this home, which is a fair shout, considering it was really difficult to overtake around Monza and... The only real opportunity is into turn one, and we all know how that happened with many other drivers trying to overtake there today. You just get squeezed, potential contact. I'd love to be a fly on the wall, I tell you. At Scruderier F1. Now this, this team radio. What? It will be tight to make it to the end. Okay, try your best. Okay, maybe Ferrari was a little bit against themselves today. Not, not horrendously. I don't know, maybe maybe we read too much into it because it is Ferrari team radio and we expect them to do something a bit silly. Try your best though. <laughs> Just like, not, not you know, try and, you know, I don't know, accelerate less hard out of turn two or change something on the settings. No, try your best. At Ahmed underscore Balkbar, Ferrari fans right now, <laughs> what happened to me watching both Ferraris fighting? And there's another one from Scruder F1 here, me watching the fight between Carlos and Charles. Let me know in the comments how you felt during that battle. How would you sum it up in one word? I'd love to know. And also, whilst you're here, please do subscribe to the P1 channel. We're so close to 400,000 subscribers, which is insane, considering we've only been going less than seven months. So please do subscribe. We've got lots more amazing content. We've got Daniel Ricciardo interview coming. We've got a Carlos Sainz interview coming as well, both recorded, so get subscribing. Honorable mentions. Nico Rosberg was there this weekend, wasn't he? And we all know what the Rosberg curse is about. If you don't, he takes a picture in front of something, it goes wrong. So what does he do? What does he go and take a picture of? The entire grid. <laughs> At B Suzuzi 99, he doesn't understand the extent of his powers. So he took a picture of the whole grid. And what happens? We have, <laughs> we literally have an abandoned start because Sonoda couldn't make it round to the grid. And then it was a red flag technically. Rosberg is unbelievably powerful. Get a picture in front of Verstappen's car I think he did actually. Is it Hungary or something? Max is just like, mate, I don't care. C what curse? The Alonso curse of like the 33? Nah. The Matt P1 Tommy curse? Nah. The anything curse. Verstappen just doesn't care. At F1 has to plan, Magnussen watching the Ferraris. <laughs> This is such a good meme. Oh, I love this one. Because he was just chilling behind the two Ferraris on, I'm pretty sure, reasonably fresh mediums. He was just watching them battle. He had front row seats. So uh, a race to forget for K-Mag because he was a lap down, but I'm sure he enjoyed that. At Chloe D underscore CD, Hamilton moaning about his tyres. Now, he started on the hard tyres. One of, I think, three that started on the hards. Went really long. I'm not sure it was actually a particularly good strategy, but I think, you know, Mercedes just thought it was going to be quite difficult to overtake, so do something different, perhaps get them uh, at the end with the mediums. And to be fair, he came through pretty quickly at the end, had that contact with Piastri, which I think we've got a meme coming up about. And uh, yeah, he wasn't too happy with how early they pitted him off the hards, but it turned out to be okay because 
less fuel. The mediums was what, 25 laps? It wasn't too bad. At Agent 7X200, Hamilton versus Piastri. I think Hamilton's penalty was absolutely deserved. It was it was one of those where usually the other driver sort of leans over towards the, the edge of the track to try and get a good run through that second chicane, but Piastri just didn't do that, and Hamilton just came across. So I suppose in some ways, Oscar not drifting over increased the percentage risk of those two coming together, and of course, it cost Oscar Piastri points. So... Perhaps if you evaluate it that way, you could say Oscar could have maybe done more to limit the risk for his own car. But at the same time, Hamilton obviously drifted over, expecting maybe Oscar to do that. They came together, the penalty was warranted, and it ruined Oscar's race, which is which is a shame because he was going to pick up a few points. And, uh, and Hamilton still managed P6 despite the penalty because he was a lot quicker at the end. At Lurking Ch Choco, where is the Monza curse when you needed it? Monza curse means Max won't get win number 10. My brother in Christ is literally Max Verstappen. He does deserve his, his sort of credits, his plaudits in this episode because we have literally witnessed history today. Seb had nine in a row and we all thought there's no way anyone's going to beat it. And he did. How, how far is he going to go as well? That's the question. Red Bull are so good in race pace, in, in the fact they can look after their tyres so incredibly well, he could win the rest of them. Red Bull could genuinely get the clean sweep. He can't win every race, or they can't win every race, can they? At Mr. Idiot, he's just unstoppable. No wishing for death, no falling in love, no bringing back dead people. There are four rules. There is no... There, there's no way! I don't know how... how. <laughs> just... I think that was our, our chance. I genuinely do. I think that was our chance because Ferrari could have defended. I genuinely think Sainz could have maybe kept Max ahead for a, for at least a lot longer, perhaps into the pit stops, than Red Bull could have undercut and, and been okay, probably. But <sighs> he's unstoppable. P2 with Matt and Tommy, where we pretend Max doesn't exist, which is just for fun, by the way. We do commend him for his achievements we would have had a fight between Perez who was at the back of that two Ferrari train two, that doesn't make any sense we had Sainz Leclerc Perez that was a great battle imagine that for the lead at Jones RF873 AWS delivered I loved this graphic these are the graphics that AWS should be giving us. And to be honest with you, I feel like AWS hasn't really given us any new graphics in quite some time. We've got the, you know, catch them in how many laps kind of stuff, but we've not really had a new edition. This one, although, albeit maybe doesn't tell us much, it tells us a little bit, doesn't it? Like the ERS deployment. Oh, Verstappen's using a bit more. I think that was the only time we saw it, though. I think AWS went, good lord, this is difficult to, to measure or to keep up with. We're not going to really show it much more, but I wanted more of it. And Blue Shea 3, Esteban being retired out of the race in the quietest way. Yeah, that was that was weird, wasn't it? I guess it was because there was battles, but Ocon just 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 retired. I would I will say, for the TV direction this weekend, it wasn't perfect. It was good, but in qualifying we had laps being completed and they were just watching. I think signs was it uh, on an on an in lap and then just there were laps being completed and we couldn't see none of it don't know why that happened and also this this race they could have used the mini box a bit more sergeant was fighting for his first ever point against bottas if you've seen the incident by the way completely deserved the penalty just went into the side of him but they could have used the, the mini box a lot more i feel like they didn't really use it at all despite there being uh, multiple battles at times and there were lols in the race, so we need to see every battle if we can. At Yen Franz, mechanics racing, F1 cars racing. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? When we had a couple of mechanics on the grid at the start that were like, I don't think we should be here yet. And I'm surprised there wasn't some kind of penalty or, I don't know, investigation because it felt like they shouldn't have been there, but nothing happened. A bit like Ferrari and the fact that they exceeded the maximum qualifying uh, safety car line time and then they got pole and the FIA were like 
No, no, it's all good. No, 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 we're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no more investigation necessary. Another one from at Ahmed underscore Bapa. Mercedes MG Petronas F1 team. Mercedes OMG five seconds time penalty F1 team. Yeah, Russell obviously getting a penalty as well for fighting Ocon, I think it was, out the pits and just went, you know what, I'm going to straight line this. That, that was a carbon copy of like when you play the F1 game. And you you know you just you just corner cut and go ah screw it foot to the floor let's go and then it gives gives you a penalty and you go oh what for it was warranted that's Josh Sweet five six seven three nobody knows what happened to Ocon genuinely there's there's Max and Checo there was Ferrari and then there was Ocon but to be fair we missed nothing Alpine were incredibly washed this weekend nowhere no pace whatsoever. <laughs> Right, it's Tommy's Tasty Tweet time now, and here he is in his turquoise. Is it turquoise? Would you say it's turquoise? Teal? What would you call teal, it? Turquoise. Yeah, turquoise, I'd teal. say. Love it. And you're here to uh, give out an F123 copy to the winner of Tommy's Tasty Tweet. Who has won uh, for the Italian Grand Prix? The winner is Phoenix TVX with this lovely. I love it when people make memes based on our funny reactions and stuff, and this one's a brilliant one from course the qualifying that perfectly sums up the race love it certainly does well done fenix you win a, a copy of f123 and uh yeah we'll be back in a couple of weeks thank you tommy bye 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 right that is it thank you so much for tuning in to the funniest tweets to the italian grand prix from monza i hope you enjoyed we've got a week break before we then go to singapore the week after remember to use hashtag p1 if you want to get involved next time and potentially win an amazing copy of f123 if you win tommy's tasty tweet and that is it please subscribe get us over the 400k mark if you can and we'll see you very soon lots more content as i say we've got We've literally got a backlog. We're trying to find a slot to put it in, so you better be ready. See you soon. Bye! Oh, I forgot the green screen was there. I think I just broke something. Bye!